Hi folks, today I'm going to share with you how much I've spent to date and also what it costs compared to other building methods. So stick around and we'll dive in. Right, as you can see, we are finally inside and relatively closed in. We've got no window or door, but apart from that, we are a building. Today, I really wanted to explain a couple of things, really, um, a whole bunch of things, to be honest. Why I went the route I did, what the other options were, um, what the cost benefit is, plus the efficiency of building this way. I'm going to talk about the timber frame versus going with a stick built sort of stud work type frame. Um, and also obviously our walls and roof because it's a little bit unconventional. And I'll try and share some of my MDF calculations. First up, let's talk about the structure, the frame, because as you can see, I went pretty solid and uh, some said over the top, I reckon it's, it's okay. Uh, it's uh, certainly not gonna blow away, it's no garden shed, but it was just a way of getting that structure up and that's just personal preference. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as it's structurally sound. So as far as our other options, we had stud work, which of course is more of a conventional way to go. I would have taken the same route as far as the ground works, and today I'm not really gonna talk about that. Um, maybe I'll actually do an update video on the ground works because we poured this concrete slab about three, four years ago, and it's just sat here waiting. But it's a big substantial slab, and it's a reinforced, it's again over the top. But that would have stayed the same whether we were doing stud work or a traditional timber frame um, or even if we were going to do it in block work. So cost wise I spent £1,300 I think on all of the Douglas fir for this build. If I was going to do it in oak it would probably cost about 25% more um, but of course timber prices at the moment are going a bit nuts so um, it might, might be completely different today as it was a few months ago when I bought all the timber. I built everything in 175 dimension which is seven by seven posts and beams uh, you could scale that back for certain you could do it in standard 150 posts um, and beams and probably lose one of the bays you could just do one um, post down the middle of each wall so you could shave that right back and I wouldn't be surprised if you could do a very similar traditional structure for about a thousand pounds so if we want to convert that into stud work I worked out we needed 120 studs to build the same size structure um, with a treated plate around the bottom, the rest of it just in CLS. Some people might use treated for the whole thing, but um, you're building it like a timber frame and it's gonna have everything waterproof on the outside. So you could just use standard CLS. So if we're gonna go that route, current price, just from what I just grabbed off the internet, which was quite a good price, was uh, came in at about 630. Um, and then, on top of that, you're of course going to need OSB or some sort of way of stopping it from racking. So if you add that on, I worked it out to about £7 a square metre. Of course, all this could be bought cheaper if you hunted around. Um, but that's 350 So already, you're pretty much at £1,000 um, for a structure. And then if then you're moving on to the insulation, which will step away from the frame because the frame is what it is. Um, you can do everything I did with the panel system and the insulation over the top of a stud work structure. Um, so you could do a bit of a hybrid. So if we move on to those panels, the insulated panels I've used are basically commercial composite panels. They're made up of 0.5 mil or 0.7 mil steel either side with PIR insulation in the middle. So it's a similar thought process or at least i did it used it on a similar thought process of using sips and i had a whole bunch of messages emails and um, panicking people thinking that i just ruined this building because i built the timber frame i'm not emotionally like i like making and trying new stuff but i'm not emotionally attached to the fact it's a timber frame and i but it, but if i'm getting a bit sentimental about it I'd rather be on the inside looking at it because that's where I'm gonna be working and spending my time. In a minute, I'll show you what it's looking like outside and hopefully that'll settle some of you. Um, because yes, a timber frame can look great from both sides, but in most situations, we're not talking about gazebos and pergolas and garden structures where you might see it from all sides. Most oak frame, timber frame, traditional frame houses or buildings 
you don't see it from the outside. And I think that's what was confusing people. When you have a timber framed house, if I built you know, a big five bed oak framed house, I wouldn't necessarily, in most cases, unless you're doing infill, I wouldn't see that frame on the outside. And that from a performance point of view, it makes no sense to necessarily see it from the outside. Timber moves, it's much better, and much more efficient to wrap it in a tea cozy and then your oak frame is almost independent from your thermal bit. So in this case, I'm just playing. You know, this is an outbuilding and I've said it in an Instagram post recently that an outbuilding is almost like a perfect playground or I use it almost like a sketchbook because I'm sketching ideas in my head that one day I might use on a bigger project. Um, and if it's not gonna work, I'll find out at this point rather than doing it on an extension to the house or a new build or something like that, a self-build. So what I wanted to do is use these panels just like you would sit on a house build. And the way you would typically do that on a house build um, or on a bigger building, you'd have your frame like we've got here and you typically would then put battens on the back of these timbers, which we've done. In our case, I've done 25 mil battens because all I'm doing is just setting this back. I can then run cables behind here if I wanted to. It sets the oak away, uh, the Douglas fir away. It makes more of a feature of it. Sure, you could put lighting and all sorts down here, but there's another reason for that. If this was a tr traditional or a SIP panel, which is OSB rather than seal, you would have that cavity. You'd make it a bit bigger than this, actually. You'd use double the depth, and then you'd batten onto your OSB then you fit your plasterboard and your plasterboard will then sit just behind your timbers. That means you're not skimming up to the timbers, you've got space that the timbers can contract, not exposing whatever you know, edges of the boards there might be or beads or anything like that. So it basically again keeps the wall independent from the frame. So your structural bit stands separate, albeit that it's attached. So again, like I keep saying, it's just me practicing and experimenting with different things. And having this here, I've got space here, although I'm gonna do a dado trunking all the way around, I think, for all the machinery. I've got space here, I can run additional cable around here, I can run an air hose behind here. And in the case of these two verticals, I've actually got no button there, there's no need. I've got 1.8 meter sensors for my wall panels. This is absolutely solid. Now, the last video I had stacks of people asking about costings. Could this be used, this panel system or no? Stud work built structure and also how much does it cost in comparison. So let's have a look at figures. Right, back to our MDF calculator. Roofing, so what we've got here, let's start on the roof. All I've got is a center beam. It's pretty huge, but what it does is it means I can have a pitched roof because I just had enough of flat roofs to be honest. I've got the huge, uh, what is it, 10 meters by five meter or something uh, on that garage conversion. If I was to do another one here, it would just look a bit slabby, the whole kind of back of the house. If I, in an ideal world, I would put a slate roof on the garage conversion, and then perhaps I would have been able to do a flat roof here. All I would have gained by doing a flat roof, albeit it's never flat, a shallow pitch roof, mono pitch, I would have gained a little bit of height um, at the eaves. It's, it's fine, it's 2.2 meters, which isn't too low, um, but it would have just, taking it up a little bit. That said, that would only be the overall height. I would have to deal with ceiling joists or roof joists and they would have to be quite thick. If I was spanning the five meters, they'd be 200 to 25 mil. So I'd actually be probably the same, if not lower than what we've got here. Anyway, let's look at the cost. If you were gonna put flat roof timbers on this building, you would need 80 meters, 80, 80 linear meters. Um, I've based it on 200 mil timber. I haven't looked at a span table. You probably need 225 or nine inch um, to do this. It's basically 500 quid to just put the timbers up. On top of that, if you're looking at a flat roof option, you're gonna have to put OSB or plywood, but uh, typically OSB, 18 mil, you need 30 square meters. That's with no overhangs. You'd actually need a bit more. Times that by seven pounds, because that's what I roughly put in as a square meter cost. That's 210 pounds just for the decked out roof. So you're on 710 pounds at that point. An EPDM kit for this size building, that's all in with the trims and the adhesive like we used on the other building, 650 pounds plus delivery, maybe free, don't know. 
then you've got to insulate the thing. Uh, so you would need to, to get it to a similar spec to what this building is, you would need to uh, put 100 mil between the joists. I haven't even accounted for the fact that you'd have thermal bridging all the way across on everything, uh, on every timber. So you'd probably want to do what we did in the garage conversion, which is put another 50 mil underneath. Either way, that takes you up to about seven or 800 pounds. You are well over 2,000 pounds and that just leaves you with an insulated ceiling. You still got to then think about plasterboard and your internal finishes. So let me just finish putting that down. So 2,200, let's call it. So that establishes that it's going to cost you over two grand to have an insulated flat roof to a similar thermal properties as this. And that would either give you an EPDM top, I don't know what it would cost in fiberglass, let's just say it's similar. The option to go this route takes you uh, up to about half of that. So this is 30 pounds a square meter. This is for 80 millimeter um, depth of PIR. But remember, I have no idea on these figures uh, as far as U value. I would suggest though that 80 millimeters of continuous insulation across the whole roof, essentially the same as a warm roof, a warm deck roof, is probably not far off the equivalent of doing 100 mil between because we literally have one massive sheet of insulation on both, you know, on the whole roof, which is then connected to the walls. And like, like I was saying, we've got that continuous insulation around the whole building. That said, you can get it in 100 mil, 150 mil, you know, panels. But we paid 30 pounds square meter, that's 900 quid. Yes, you've got to pay delivery, which can be costly. It cost me 300 pounds plus VAT to get everything delivered. And people were astonished at that. But if you break it down per panel and per square meter, it's not too bad. It just adds on about a pound a square meter or something like that. And at the end of the day, it was a lorry that had to come across the country, a, a big lorry, and, um, and deliver all the stuff. So I, I kind of justified that to myself and it still brings it in, this whole roof finished with the top being weatherproof and the underside being a finished ceiling, albeit you could quite easily clad or plasterboard this fully insulated, thermally broken, and it was a thousand pounds. So there are your options. I said in the last video, no one gets a flat roof, an EPDM roof, or a fiberglass roof, or whatever, for the aesthetics. So I would suggest that you, it's worth looking at this option, um, because it's gonna, not gonna uh, look any different, really. And even if you've got a mono pitch, a typical garden building, which I have my opinions on, but if you've got your end of garden, garden building um, which is you know clad in vertical cedar and anthracite windows and doors and you've got that flat roof falling back which is quite typical you're not going to see the profile of this roof maybe from upstairs but you could still have that same fascia on the front and if this versus doing a warm roof on a flat outbuilding flat roof outbuilding Typically, you'd have your joists at 200 millimeters, then your OSB at 18, then maybe 100 millimeters of uh, PIR on top of that, and then potentially another deck on top of that, and then you, and you end up with a fascia at the front, like this. Um, so this option gets away from that. You can still put a decorative fascia on the front. You have to, be, have to be a little bit creative with how you use these panels, because typically they have a whopping great box gutter, commercially. Um, I've not done a huge overhang. Most of the buildings around our area tend to, or the cottages and stuff, just tend to have it flush to the stonework anyway, so it's, it doesn't look too odd. I would have liked an overhang, more aesthetics than anything. This side of the building is not seen by anything and uh, it's the most exposed. It's also been left with just the steel on the outside. This side, which is the visible side to the garden, the house that, and all the views, is clad now in cedar, um, but horizontal, rough, sawn cedar. Um, and it ha hasn't got an overhang. It's very, the wind and rain is always coming this way, but anyway, more on that when we come to the cedar episode. I think that kind of covers all the questions that I've had coming in. In answer to can you use this roof on other applications, I reckon if you had stud work walls, like I said, you could just put this straight on. It's very hard to find span tables for this because it's commercial stuff and it tends to talk about figures that are not directly applicable to a standalone span. So um, 
after digging around and talking to a couple of structural mates, two meters for 80 mil panels is about it. You could go a little bit more. And the, the slight reservation I had about two meters was completely um, got rid of when I actually put this stuff up and I could hang in the middle and it barely deflected at all. They are pretty solid uh, and it's all to do with that top sheet. This is turning into a right rambling episode, I know. The top sheet of this insulation is typically 0.5 mil, which is the standard grade. There is a heavier grade, which is 0.7 mil. When we used just the steel box profile on the lower shed, I used 0.7. It's quite, it doesn't sound it, 0.5 versus 0.7. It's quite a lot stronger. You can source this composite panels, I think, with a 0.7 top sheet. That would add some strength as well. But it's the insulation as well, which is changes the span. So if you only got this in 40 mil, then I wouldn't expect you to be able to go much beyond 1.5, maybe even less. But, you know, there might be applications where at two meters or just over, you can easily do the whole roof with no roof timbers at all. If it was just, you know, 2.4 meter depth building, you, you might want to just uh, take the punt and, and go for it because then you've just got a seamless ceiling. You've only got a build up of 80 mil plus your ridges. It's like 120 mil or just under. Uh, and that gives you more ceiling height inside. And if you're under permitted development and that's one of your restrictions, then that might be a way of getting some more head height. One of the main reasons that I went this route. So I promised some figures on where I'm at with this building. I'm not going to talk about the slab because I simply can't remember. I think it was 700 pounds for the lorry of concrete uh, and the mesh and shuttering it out plus a few tons of hard I would say like a thousand pounds or maybe a bit more nowadays would get you this concrete slab but park that to one side our frame I have no fixings apart from some oak pegs which I made myself I don't have any fixings in um, the whole structure so it's simply the timber and like I said that came in at 1,300 pounds and I've got about three big beams left over so I'll leave it at 1.3 but it's less and um, on top of that we've got all of the cladding uh, the, the insulated cladding that came in I should probably check let's just actually check got it three thousand and ninety four pounds that was with delivery with everything in I over ordered a bit um, and also if you're not in a rush <laughs> I ordered standard sheets, they come in meter increments. I had to do all those cuts. It's pretty much the same pricing, I think, if you wanna order everything cut to size with all the cutbacks done. That way you would minimize your wastage as well. But I'm gonna say it's 3,000 pounds, plus I've got enough to build a small shed um, or a tool store or a bike shed or whatever from the offcuts. Uh, so we said 3,000. And then finally, our cladding on the outside of this building, I've counter batten the whole thing with uh, some slightly deeper batten, it's 35 mil. And then on top of that, I've used our local cedar uh, that's been cut at the sawmill and I've boarded out with Douglas fir. I'm gonna reveal all this in the next video. But anyway, the outside is, is now completely finished and doesn't look like a fridge anymore. So I'm in at 4.8 thousand to get us to this point. I haven't got any doors. I've got a window, it's not in yet, but it's, glass I've already got in, in storage. So I've got to pay for a door. I've got an epoxy floor to put down, uh, but that'll be in the future. But at this point, apart from the electrics, which are a separate entity, um, I've now got a fixed, finished, dry building, and we're at 4.8 thousand. Um, no idea what it would cost if you uh, bought an oak frame or a timber frame kit. If you wanted this look, uh, that would have to be something you looked into. I'm not yet sure how it's going to perform thermally and acoustically. Um, thermally, I think it'll be just fine, even though we haven't got an insulated floor. I've done it in a way that you could put a floating... <laughs> Sorry, drill. You could put a floating floor in here and insulate it, and if you wanted it as a home office, a gym, a studio, a yoga palace, I don't know. But if you wanted to make this into more habitable, uh, not habitable, but you know, more uh, comfortable space, you could put a, a floor in as well. So 
I'm not sure if I'm surprised or not, but if you add up all of the costings for doing this in stud work with insulation between, OSB on the outside, and then your batten, battens and cladding, and if you then put a standard flat roof on here, insulated between, and an EPDM roof over OSB, you end up, on my rough calculations, at 4.7. 4,700 pounds. I probably missed stuff and I haven't put fixings or anything in there and that doesn't include the floor. Our calculation for this timber frame plus all the t uh, composite cladding and the cedar cladding outside is 4.8. So pretty much level pegging. Um, I'd, I'd say after all your fixings and stuff on a, tim on a stud work, especially if you're putting straps in, all that stuff adds up, I think it's probably about the same. Don't know if that's surprising or not. But what I would say is this was much quicker. Uh, not the timber frame bit, but the cladding bit was. But if you've ever cut and fit insulation between every stud and every rafter or every joist, it's, um, that's a pretty time consuming, messy, a horrible job to do. And if I can, every job, every project in the future, I will always be looking to do either warm roof, external insulation, sips, you know, one of these approaches where you're not messing around like that, you keep the structure separate from the insulation. It's so much better performing, even from a complete novice, haven't got a clue person like me, I can tell that we've got 100 mil coming up the wall, which is sealed with expanding foam, you know, so there's not even a gap or a break there, to then coming across, again sealed there and back down. There is just no, really no bridging. A few more things I can show you before we head off because that was probably a lot of uh, a lot of jargon and a lot of chat, but it was stuff that people were asking and I promised a detailed video coming out and hopefully that covered a lot of it. This is our double door. I figured I got enough of these off cuts. Well, these, this was one full length that I had spare. Um, I've just put it in, it's secured in by a batten. On the outside, it looks like a garage door. And for the time being, I'm absolutely fine with that. I don't think I'm gonna be bringing in anything bigger than a wide standard door at the moment. This entrance here was really for bringing in big stuff from the side gate into the garden and getting big projects out. In reality, I could probably manage without it. So for the time being, that's a quick solution. And this is what the rest of the building's looking like. Uh, we obviously need to get some power in here. I want to get big lights up, ready, brighten up the whole place. I'm going to sand back our beams a little bit because they were out in the elements. And then once I've done that, I'm going to oil them up. What I want to be able to do is slow down the rate at which these dry. And by oiling them at this point, that will slow it right down. I don't know if I'm going to make my own concoction, whether I'll just use Osmo or uh, maybe uh, see if there's any products out there. I know there are lots in the States, but Something like a linseed and terps blend uh, tends to be a good route to go apparently, so we might look at doing that. Um, but apart from that, timbers are all good, they're all done. I still haven't done that little chamfer on the corners, so I might get the router and just do that, especially on the beam up the middle, up here, uh, just because I don't think I'm gonna catch my head on it. It's 2.15 meters, so it's not too low, um, but I think it would just look a, bit, look a bit nicer if I just knock the edge off that. The window, again, is just one big glazed unit. And then I'm looking to put a fan in over here. I think it was on Samurai, Jesse on Samurai Carpenter installed a fan at the end of his workshop for dust. Uh, not, I, I was thinking more for ventilation, so I can just crack open the door over there and either have it pulling out or blowing in. Uh, I don't know if you can get two way, I'm pretty sure you can. But I was, uh, I was liking his idea, he had a fan up there opens the door, leaf blower, and all these dust heads out. I've got ducting to go up in here anyway, an essential vacuum type system set up, I hope. Just before we wrap up, let me show you the wall build up, because this kind of explains everything I've just been talking about. We've got 175 of our structural post. Then we've got the batten on here, which is 25 mil standard roofing batten. On the outside of that, we've got our 100 mil composite panel. And then outside of that, we've got a thicker batten, and then we've got, in this case, a Douglas fir board and some cedar cladding. But this gives you an idea of what the build-up consists of. And if you were doing this with an oak framed house, you would do exactly the same thing 
this would probably be a sip, might be thicker, how to OSB the side of it, and on the outside of that you may well have stonework, brickwork, board and render, so you can it, you end up with quite a thick wall, um, but what you do end up with is this layer here, this most important layer, which is just solid insulation all the way around, completely continuous, insulated splines, spleens, in between the boards as well, so it's, um, yeah, it's just one big, one big cosy building. Well, there we go, folks. Hopefully that sheds some light on what we've spent. Hopefully you also get an idea of why I took my time getting to this point. 5,000 pounds is quite a bit of money, and uh, five years ago when I was planning this workshop, it just wasn't an option when we had a leaking roof on the house. So <clears throat> getting to this point now, it's nice to be able to have kind of saved up that little bit of extra. What's paid for this is what I saved on the roof. You know, um, by doing that whole roof myself, it freed up a little bit of the money we put aside for that to finish off this uh, concept. So there we go. It just shows that it can be worth all that hard graft in the end. Hopefully also this gives you an idea of this concept versus traditional. Maybe, just maybe, gives you an idea of what might be uh, possible instead of just going for the run of the mill. Uh, standard stuff good to think outside the box and good to keep the brain cells working but thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time